We're going to move from humor to controversy with our next team of challengers. Let's meet them. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Warren Farrell. Number two. My name is Warren Farrell. Number three. My name is Warren Farrell. Panel, up to you to locate the real Warren Farrell. Here is his story. I, Warren Farrell, am a sociologist. In the 1970s, I wrote a pro-feminist book called The Liberated Man and have the distinction of being the only man elected three times to the executive board of the National Organization for Women in New York City. But now I've changed my tune. In my new book, Why Men Are the Way They Are, I show how men have now become the victims. Many men would like to change their lives, but they are unsure of how to go about it. Women are sending out confusing messages. Women gripe that men can't express their emotions. But if women really wanted their men to be sensitive and open, why do they continue to look for and marry for money? How many women executives do you know who would even consider their male secretary to be a good catch? Today, it's the men, not the women, who take the brunt of sexist jokes. If the jokes were at the expense of women or blacks or Jews, there would be screams of protest. Well, I'm a man, and I'm screaming. It's time to give men a break. Signed, Warren Farrell. We may wind up having a fight on our hands. Ron, you start us off in this round, please. What changed your mind, number one? I began to see that there wasn't that a lot of the people who were in the women's movement, when I met them five or six years later, were they, they were broken out of relationships, they didn't have the type of love that they wanted, and I felt that there was a possibility that they weren't understanding and really loving the men in their life, so I started hearing men differently than I had heard before. Number two, you were elected three times. Couldn't you find this out the first time you were elected? No, I was right out of college, and I was, uh, had been a delegate to the Democratic Convention. I was swept up in the excitement of it. Number three, can you name? Oh, sorry about that, Ron. Dana. Number three, are you married? Yes, I am. And what does your wife think of this book? She likes this book very much. It e equalizes the first book. Okay, and number two, it says that men are the brunt of sexist jokes. Can you tell me a sexist male joke? Actually, I can't give you a joke, but I can give you the recent lyrics to a rap song. The men are encouraged to say, men say, make money, money, money. Women say, take money, money, money. Whoa. Oh, and okay. it's repeated oh. over and over again. All right, again. David, over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, number one, uh, what do you think is, in your book anyway, what do you say is the most confusing thing, the, the confusing message the women try to get across to men? I think women often say things like, I want a man with a warm, tender, open, vulnerable, caring self. And then oftentimes they end up marrying men who they fall in love with within the framework of more successful men. They don't marry the secretaries, the tender, vulnerable men selling shoes at, at Nordstrom's. And so men find the message... Right, thank confusing. you, because I'm not going to have any more time for questions. <laughs> right. Number two, what is the real main thrust of this book? Are you, is this a solution book? Well, it's, a, it's an awareness book. We're in a period of transition and confusion, and I think we must address the issue. You can hear the uh, angry thrusts of the men out in the audience. I think it's just important we start addressing it, becoming aware of it. Is this more for men or for women, number three? Let's go to Kitty, sorry. Number three, do you think that the whole feminist movement has... Uh, unsexed men made them softer more well shall i say not as not as aggressive or as male as they were before not necessarily but uh, the feminist movement has uh, we have backlash from it now and and that's what the men are feeling resentment for number two who is betty for dan uh, she wrote the feminine mystique uh-huh and number one when you joined the uh the uh, uh, national organization for women what did you do in it i mean what was your what was the purpose of it I helped organize things like debates. Oh, I see. Uh huh. And that was the shortest response given by number one. I had the feeling earlier that he was out to write a book. If he's not the real one, he may write a book about his experiences on this program. But right now, panel, I want you four to vote for one of these gentlemen. Who is the pro male sociologist? Is it number one, number two, or number three? Ron, you've got your card already. Alex, I was absolutely sure until Kitty asked that question. Mm -hmm. And then I changed my mind because I was really going to go with number three because I figured he was dressed for himself and he used to dress for women and he said, the heck with that, I'm going to wear what I want to wear now. Number one offered entirely too much information. So I went with number two on Kitty's question. All righty. Dana? 
and and I went with number two uh, uh, because I thought he gave me an example of a sexist joke right off the bat in a rap song, which I thought that wouldn't wouldn't have been something that the that the the producers would have had them cover. So I went with number two. Oh, suspicious of our producers, yes. Dennis? Yes, David. What about oh. you? Well, I'm suspicious of them as well, but I also happen to agree with the both of you. Number one did give me much too much information. Also, it gobbled up most of my time, so I couldn't ask the others too many questions. <laughs> so you decided to penalize number one and vote for number two. Kitty? Well, I stuck with number three. I feel, I thought that he, he was quite right when he said there was a certain amount of backlash. I think the feminist movement has kind of uh, disorganized the balance a little bit, so I voted for number three. All right, let's review our balloting. Number one, who spoke very eloquently, received no votes, however. Number two got three votes, and number three picked up one vote. So now let's find out who the real men's liber is. Will the real Warren Farrell please stand up? Hey! <laughs> Anna was stopped. Boy, did he get up quickly, too. <laughs> Warren... Obviously, you feel we've gone too far. How long before we get back to where we should be in our relationships between Actually, men and women? I feel we haven't gone far enough. I feel like there's a lot of equality that men need to obtain, the ability to not have to get involved in a, in a war any more than a, a woman would have to get involved in the war, that type of thing. Uh -huh. Is there another book uh, in the wings? Uh, there's a book to be called published? The Ten Greatest Myths About Men. Oh, I see. All right. Well, nice having you here today. Let's Thank find you. out about our imposters. Number two, you were terrific. You uh, earned three votes. Who are you, please? My name is Mike McNabb, and I am an attorney. A lawyer. A vote also for number three. Tell me about yourself. My name is Garen Barry, and I'm an a cappella singer. A cappella singer. Well, you gentlemen were great. You stumped the panel, and that means the team will receive $3,000. And thank you so much for being with us today and enlightening us on this very touchy subject. We'll be back to play one-on-one -on -one with someone from the studio audience after this break.